So I'm talking about uh, sharing a little about the Prophet Idris alayhi salam, peace be upon him. There's not much in Muslim literature relating to the Prophet Idris alayhi salam, uh, but what we'll mention some of what's there. We'll mention something related to uh, uh, the the Christian uh, perspective, Christian Jewish perspective uh, on him, and then we will. Uh, Make dua, <laughs> inshallah ta'ala. May Allah bless all of you. So Idris, first of all, the name uh, is not considered an Arabic word, but in that it's from the Semitic language, the meanings are very close. So Idris is considered to be derived from darasa, to study, and it's an emphatic form of uh, uh, daris, or not, not something wiped out or effaced, but one who is uh, studying and given to study and given to tremendous study. And this name uh, is fitting with this meaning for Idris because he's reckoned as being the first one to write with the pen. So Idris is in our literature and is reckoned as being the first one to write with the pen. He's reckoned as being the first one to sew garments. Before Idris, people wear the, the skins and hides of animal to cover their nakedness and to protect themselves from the elements. Idris is uh, considered to be the first one to actually sew garments. And so this is another science that he is, uh, he initiated uh, the first to write with the pen. He's reckoned as being the first to study the sciences of both uh, astronomy and cosmology, and uh, excuse me, astronomy and mathematics. So Idris was the first one to study the sciences and explore the sciences of mathematics and astronomy. So in these ways and other ways, Idris was one given to study. And so as we reflect and ponder on the life of Idris, alayhi salam, then we should uh, remind ourselves of just how definitive scholarship is in the life of the Muslim. We are, as the noted Orientalist Franz Rosenthal mentioned, we are a knowledge-based civilization. Uh, Islam was at these shores long before any of us or our parents and our grandparents were born. Those Muslim slaves who came from Africa, many of them were practicing their religion. They were writing Quran, they were teaching Quran, they were fasting Ramadan, but they did not have the wherewithal in the context of slavery and the, the brutality of the system and the, the tremendous uh, forces of uh, extractive labor to set up an educational system or to successfully pass the knowledge of the religion down to their children. So Muslim slaves will come, there'd be a Muslim presence, but when they die, generally Islam would die with them. And there are a few exceptions to that. But even the exception proves the rule. So if we could look at the children and descendants of, of Saleh and Biladi in Sapelo Island area of, of coastal islands of Georgia, we saw that within a couple generations, the active practice of Islam had disappeared, although there were some cultural relics, such as the rice cakes or, or other cultural relics, but the actual practice because of the difficulty in handing down the knowledge was missing. So Idris is a reminder that this Islam is a knowledge-based religion and it requires study. Every, and of course, everyone isn't going to become alama. So you have the alam, you have the alim, you have the uh, alama, the, the big, big scholar. Everyone isn't going to be alama, the hammer. But everyone can study. Everyone can read. Where there's so much Islamic literature in English, increasingly in Spanish. So you don't have to be a scholar of Arabic. Certainly every Muslim endeavors to learn something of the Arabic language to perform their prayers and other acts of worship. But there's a wealth of, of literature available in various uh, Western languages, particularly in English, to help us to be able to study the religion in a continuous and ongoing Fashion. So that's the name Idris. Idris is associated by our Muslim scholars with the biblical prophet Enoch. So Enoch 
E N O C H. Enoch, the biblical prophet, is associated with Idris, alayhi <clears throat> salam. In Arabic, Enoch is Khunuq or Akhnuq. So Khunuq or Akhnuq. So Enoch, Khunuq, Akhnuq, alayhi salam. So that, and so when you read such as Ibn Kathir's Qisus al Anbiya or the various tafsir literature, you'll see Khunuq or Akhnuq mentioned as being the uh, biblical name of Idris. Uh, his, the lineage of Idris, Idris is close to Adam السلام, So Idris is the, the son of Yarid So in, in some of our Islamic literature you see Yarid with the alif, the tool Yarid or Yarid Qasr, shortened So Yarid or Yarid So Idris Ibn Yarid Ibn Mahlail, Mahlail. So Mahlail, like Jibra, in Warsh, Jibra, Jibrail, or Mikail. So Mahlail, Mahlail. So Idris, Ibn Yadid, Ibn, uh, Ibn, uh, Mahlail, Ibn Qainan, Ibn Anush, so uh, Ibn Anush, Ibn Sheath, Ibn Adam, alayhim salam. So uh, Idris is uh, a near descendant of Adam and he's uh, uh, grandfather of Nuh, alayhi salam. So alayhim salam. So Idris is from the prophetic lineage, although we can't confirm it definitively, but it's said that the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is a descendant of Idris, and and there's dispute amongst that amongst the uh, Muslim scholars. So, for example, Imam Sadr Rasulillah, I want to misquote quote the scholar, but one of the Mufassirin uh, argues that when the Prophet Sallallahu made uh, the the uh, Isra, the Mi'raj, the ascension after the Isra. He ascended to heavens and he met Idris in the fourth heavens. He wasn't greeted the way that uh, Ibrahim السلام, greeted the Prophet as being uh, one of his descendants. And so he uses that argument, or some of the Fasirin use that argument to argue that Idris, that the Prophet وسلم, wasn't a descendant of Idris, and others claim that he was. But as we know, after Adnan, the lineages of the Prophet are not definitive, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that's his uh, lineage. Uh, the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or Idris, alayhi salam, rather, uh, he's mentioned twice in the Quran, in Surah Maryam and in Surah Anbiya. So in Maryam, it's mentioned, A'udhu billahi minash shaytan yirrajim, bismillahirrahmanirrahim, wa dhukur fil kitab Idris, إِنَّهُ كَانَ صَدِّيقًا نَبِيًّا وَرَفْعَنَاهُ مَكَانًا عَلِيًّا So recall in the book, the scripture Idris, verily he was a, one who testified to the truth. He was a prophet. So Idris is a prophet by the uh, declaration of the Qur'an. صَدِّيقًا نَبِيًّا And we elevated him to... A, a lofty place, and that lofty place is the fourth heaven. The fourth heaven, uh, based on the the Sahih sound narration of the Mi'raj, where the Prophet ﷺ is reported to have met Idris السلام, in the fourth heaven. And based on a hadith, uh, the hadith mentions, and there are various narrations and various sources mention that. Uh, Idris السلام, was taken by an angel who uh, he had befriended to the fourth heaven. In the fourth heaven, the angel asked the the, the angel of the angel of death was present, and the angel of death took Idris's life soul while in heaven, which is an exceptional situation. 
And then Idris alayhi salam, he remained there in the fourth heaven and he was met by the Prophet sallallahu in the fourth heaven. So his soul, so the body died, the soul endures until the resurrection. So Idris was met by the Prophet sallallahu in the fourth heaven. And that's the Makanan uh, Aliya, the lofty exalted place that Idris alayhi salam uh, was raised up to. Allahumma salli wa rasulillah. Now, uh, Idris alayhi salam, as we said, is uh, associated with the prophet Enoch. So in the Christian lore, Enoch, the biblical prophet Enoch, is associated by most of our Muslim historians and scholars with the prophet, uh, biblical prophet Enoch. In that regard, there are three qualities that they affirm Idris as possessing. Uh, so th those three qualities are, one, he was a pious man. And so he was a righteous person. So this is affirmed to Siddiqa, Siddiqa Nabiya. So to be a prophet, naturally he's a pious man. The second is that he lived to, for 365 years, uh, which corresponds with the 365 days of the solar cal calendar. So in this sense, Idris is considered in the Christian uh, and uh, Jewish lore as a solar hero. So someone who lived 365 days, a solar year, for 365 solar years. And so in that sense, he is a, a solar hero. Uh, the third quality is that Allah Ta'ala took him unto himself. And the word Enoch in English means initiated. And so that Allah Ta'ala initiated him into a very uh, special position of nearness and love in terms of his relationship with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So that is uh, a quality of the Prophet uh, Idris alayhi salam that the, the Christians share. And so his, uh, Allah Ta'ala expressing that nearness is his elevating Idris alayhi salam to that um, exalted station while he was alive. So as we said, his soul wasn't taken on earth. His soul was taken in the fourth heaven after he ascended to that station. So that was an honor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him and he initiated him into a very small fraternity that uh, includes Isa alayhi salam. So that the those who were taken into the heavens alive. And Idris alayhi salam, the angel of death, took his soul and Isa alayhi salam, his soul will be taken uh, after his return to the earth. The second verse we mentioned, there were two verses in the Quran. The second one was, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إسماعيل وإدريس وذا الكفل كل من الصابرين So Allah Ta'ala mentions uh, Ismail and Idris and the Kifl. All of them were amongst those who were patient. So Idris alayhi salam he was patient in his acquisition of these various knowledge. That's one manifestation of his patience. So if you recall the uh, many students of knowledge, recall a couplet they learned early on that's sometimes usually attributed to Imam al-Shafi'i, but not with a firm uh, attribution, but usually attributed to Imam al-Shafi'i concerning Describing the student of knowledge, And so you will never attain to a knowledge of the religion except with six things. I'll let you know what they are with clarity. The ka'un intellect, wahirs desire, a drive, وَاسْتِبَارٌ, patience, وَبُلْغَ, your basic provisions taken care of, وَيُشَادُ أُسْتَاذٍ, the guidance of a teacher, 
Wotulu Zamani, and a very long time. And so Idris being the first to write with the pen, being the first to study the sciences of mathematics and astronomy, being the first tailor, and, and this is something we will come back to uh, briefly. He was a scholar and therefore he had one of the requisite qualities of the scholar, which is patience. So kullum min al-sabirin, Ismaila, each was amongst those who were patient. And so that's one manifestation of the patience of Idris. The point we want to circle back to is Idris alayhi salam being the first to sew garments. So in Christian hagiography, the study and lives and uh, recording of the deeds of the saints. Idris alayhi salam or Inaq in their tradition is considered the patron saint of the tailors. So very guilds, professional guilds had their patron saints. And Idris alayhi salam was considered the patron saint of the tailors. Uh, all, all, all rooted in the fact or associated with the fact that he was the first to sew garments into clothing amongst the human family. And this is according to Muslim uh, sources and the sources of other religions. So that's a brief uh, presentation on the Prophet Idris. And we pray that we're inspired by his example, number one, to be studious and to appreciate uh, the path of knowledge and to be patient in our efforts on that path. And so, uh, and I'll conclude with this, maybe someone's working, a single mother, working, trying to raise children, taking care of a whole a household to hold everything down and doesn't have much time to study. Be patient, do what you can do. And inshallah, at a time Allah chooses, he'll grant you more time. That's anyone in that situation. So just be patient. And in time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open up the opportunity to do more. The important thing, and we'll conclude with this, because Ramadan, the verses of Ramadan, they start with uh, the declaration of the incumbency of the fast, the obligatory nature of the fast. Ya amanu kutiba alikum al-siyam. Oh, you who believe fasting has been ordained for you. Kutiba which uh, indicates in most instances that it's obligatory. And they end with in order that you are thankful. And so whatever your circumstances, brothers and sisters, if you think that it's undesirable, be thankful for what you have. Why? Because gratitude is the key to increase. As we all know, well-known, often quoted verse or phrase in a larger verse, وَلَئِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ If you give thanks, I will increase you in my blessings. So may Allah during this Ramadan, let us thank Allah for the opportunity to fast. Those who are able to gather, the masjids have been opening for the opportunity to, to, to congregate, still observe necessary precautions, social distancing, masks, etc., uh, for the opportunity for the food that we have to break our fast with despite the ravages of the COVID-19 situation, disruption of the supply chains, etc., We still have food to eat. We have shelter. The overwhelming majority of us, and may Allah help and assist those who might not, we have shelter. We have warmth. Again, the overwhelming majority of us. So let us be a people given to shukr, to gratitude. Let us be a thankful people. Let that be one of our defining and definitive characteristics. This is Imam Zay Shakir. May Allah bless all of you. May Allah Ta'ala bless us to reflect on the life of Idris and the other prophets whom you will hear about in this series. Uh, a wonderful idea that uh, Dr. Abdul Ali has come up with. Support lamppost. Help lamppost to shed more light on our religion. And in all ways, in ways that involve sometimes uh, very uh, complicated, difficult to discuss subjects. That's one thing that lamppost doesn't shy away from. 
but in fun, basic fundamental ways. I really believe it's time for us in many ways to get back to the fundamentals, the essentials of our religion. May Allah Ta'ala bless you, bless, bless this ummah. May Allah Ta'ala bless all of the wonderful brothers and sisters working with Lamp Post Productions. And may all of you have a blessed, a very insightful, spiritually uplifting, rejuvenating, revigor uh, invigorating Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ramadan Mubarak.